Okay, hello students. Now we are starting with semester two. Uh, in this semester, this is we are going with our first chapter, which is plant morphology one. Uh, in the previous semester, that is in semester one, we have studied uh, one chapter, which was plant classification, plant kingdom, basically. In that chapter, we had studied about different types of plants or different categories into which the different type of plants were placed. In this semester, we are having three chapters in botany section, which is plant morphology one, plant morphology two, and the uh, study of the internal structures of the plant. That is, their first three chapters of this semester. First, we are going to start with plant morphology one. You must be knowing the meaning of morphology, which means the study of external structures of the plant, the one which you can easily see. The same is for chapter two. It's plant morphology two. In this chapter, it's one that means we are going to study the vegetative parts of the plant, which is root, stem, and leaf. Right? The, these three parts we are going to study their morphology, which will include their structure, their characteristics, the normal function of that part of the plant, the specialized function of that part of the plant, you know, modification of that type of plant, and different type of uh, architectural uh, functions which can be done through that part of the plant. So that is what we are going to study in this chapter and with all the three parts, which is root, stem, and leaf. Now, there are, uh, we are knowing that in, again, semester one, we had already seen that the, uh, the type of the category which is dominating in the entire plant kingdom, that's angiosperms. Angiosperms, as we all knowing, uh, we all are knowing that they are the flowering plants. Now, angiosperms are the dominating species on the earth in, in when it comes to plants, right? So, flowering plants are basically dominating. As we see, there are almost three lakh species of plants present which are there all over the world which are flowering. Right, this much what we are uh, determining is the identified one. There are a lot of many, I can say millions are there out there in the world, in the forest, in different type of habitats which are yet to be identified. But right now what we have is the three lakh species which have been identified. Out in all these three lakh species, none of them are of same type. They have different size, they have different shape, they have different structure, they have different life cycles. Each and every plant is different from one another. Right? If we take an example, then Lemna uh, is the plant which is very small one. It is the smallest plant I can say. It's the smallest aquatic plant on the earth. On the contrary, there is a plant called Eucalyptus and Sequoia. If you remember, it's the full name is Sequoia Sempervirens. So, Lemna is the smallest plant and Eucalyptus and Sequoia are the tallest plants. Right? So basically, in this way it varies. All three of them are the flowering plants. All three of them are, uh, I mean, uh, they, you know, they are included in the kingdom of Phenerogames. Right? Which means flower bearing and seed bearing plant. But Lemna will be included as the smallest plant. On the contrary, Eucalyptus and Sequoia will be included in the tallest plant. Right? Even you can find variations in the, uh, you know, habitats of the plant. Uh, for example, some of the plant are hydrophytic or I can say aquatic, that is the one which are living in the uh, water areas, they are hydrophytic or aquatic. Some of the plants are epiphytic, the one which are uh, partially depending on the host, particularly for the habitat and some of them are acting as parasitic. They are the one which totally depend on the plant for everything, for food, for water, for minerals, for everything. They depend on the host. So that can be various habitats in them. Then they can be of different type of plants too. That is, some of the plants are herbs, that is medicinal plant. Some of the plants are shrubs, that is very small plant. Some of the plants are acting as trees, that is very tall plant as we have seen in eucalyptus and sequoia. And some of the plants are acting as climbers. Now climbers are the one which do not have their strong stem of its own. They always require the support of the host for climbing. So those plants are said to be climbers. Even the variation can be that some of the plants are acting as annual some are acting as biennial and some are acting as perennial plants. Now, what does that mean? 
annual is the plant which takes one complete year to complete complete its one cycle that's a type of annual plant if the plant takes more than one year almost we can say two years to complete its life cycle then it is called as biennial plant and if the plant takes more than two years to complete its life cycle then those plants are said to be perennial plants one of the example of perennial plant is bodhigaya tree that's people the name of that tree is people plant right the age of this tree at the present you know you, the maximum age what has been found in this plant is 2500 years so that will be a type of uh, uh, you know it it will be a type of perennial plants so this is what the different type of uh plants are their different uh, species are the different variations in the plants are now what we will see is that now as we know we are going to study morphology so for that before starting with the different individual part of the plant at least we should know that what are the different morphological parts present in the plant so let us see now as we know that we have given the examples earlier this is the lamina as you can see you can keep lamina at the fingertips over here simply it's 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 a type of very small powdery particles which are kept and uh, you know uh, they are that small and that's a plant it's not a uh, pollen grain or something it's an entire plant it's that small as you can see then this is a uh, Sequoia sempervirens, which is the tallest tree of the world, uh, it is almost one fifty meters of the height. Then this is eucalyptus. They are also very tall plants, but uh, the highest eucalyptus are about ninety to hundred meters, which is usually found in Australia. And uh, this is Bodhigaya tree, as I told you. It's it's a huge tree, huge one. It's a giant, giant thick one, and it's two thousand five hundred years old. A type of perennial tree. So this is all about the introduction. Now, as I said, let us study particularly about a typical plant. So now we are going to study about a typical plant. A uh, typical plant is basically having, uh, you know, a typical plant. You can study the external as well as internal structures in a plant. Let us see this uh, this uh, plant as you are seeing on the screen. Now, usually, a typical plant possesses branched as well as unbranched axes. any of the axes will be usually having two parts in them one is the underground part and other is above ground part the part which is under the ground that is called as root system and the part which is above the ground that is called as shoot system as you can see in the diagram the above th this particular line is representing the uh, you know uh, uh, the ground area below that whatever system is there that's the root system and above ground whatever system is there that's the shoot system right root system is particularly growing from a part called radical and shoot system is particularly growing from a part called plumule so plumule develop shoot system and radical develops root system right in roots there won't be variety of present present or whatever the type is there will be type of roots only but on the shoot system you will be having variety of things present as you can already see on the diagram you can get the stem axis over there you can get leaves on the shoot system you can get branches on the uh, shoot system you can get flowers you can get fruits etc so shoot system is comprising this many parts it has le stem leaves flower fruit branches as you can see upper the above portion is written terminal bud terminal bud means the apical area the tip portion from which plant will be increasing in the length and thereby the increase in the stem axis will take place axillary bud that's the bud which will increase and as a result it will uh, increase the plant girth wise that is breadth wise right this is uh, the branches also have terminal as well as axillary areas and usually those branches are said to be the vegetative ones okay leaf is having certain parts which is blade petiole and stem uh blade is usually the midvein region uh petiole is the part through which the leaf is stuck to the stem area so this is basically a type of typical plant from this we are going to start one part uh, study the part one by one so first we will be starting with the part of root 
So let us see the introduction first. Now, basically, uh, root is a type of uh, you know underground. As we know, it is a type of underground part of the plant. Uh, root usually has it is positively geotropic, positively hydrotropic, and negatively phototropic. That means that root is growing under the ground. You must be knowing the rule of gravitation that whatever is on the upper side is should come downwards. Root is that ground. This is the ground level. Now above the ground will be shoot system and under the ground will be root system. So if roots are developing from this part and they are coming downwards, that means they are following the rule of gravity. So they are positively geotropic. Same water will be always coming from the upper level to the lower level. Roots are also the same from upper level to lower level, so they are also said to be positively hydrotropic. But roots are under the ground, so they won't be getting sufficient amount of light as they will be getting when if they would have been above the ground. So in that case, they are said to be negatively phototropic. They are in the direction opposite to that of the light. So this is the introduction, and roots do not have chlorophyll in them, and that the, and that's the reason. In majority of the roots are non-green in color. Okay, now there can be different. Different types of root present. Uh, first is the tap root. Basically, the first root which develops from the radical that is called as primary. From this primary root, secondary root, and then the tertiary root will be developing. The will which which will be in the form of lateral branches of the root. If this primary root is longer and stronger. Then the secondary and the tertiary ones. Then that type of root is called as tap root. As you can see, can you see this? This part is called as primary root of the plant. This primary root is longer as well as stronger than any of its secondary or tertiary branches, which is coming out of them. Then in that case, this type of root is called as tap root. Tap root system is usually found in dicotyledons. That is the plant, the the plant in which the seed has two cotyledons in them. Usually, in that case, you will find tap root system. Uh, the plant which is growing from the radical, those plants are said to be normal roots, or those those system is said to be the normal root system. But if the plant is growing, if the plant is growing from any other part except radical, then that plant is called as adventitious root. Right now, the other parts, uh, except radical, can be hypocotyle, which is the area between the root and the. Uh, uh, I mean, it is an area between the cotyledon and the radical. That area just above the radical. So even if it is growing just above the radical, it won't be considered as tap root or normal root. In that case, it is growing from the hypocotyle area, which is considered to be adventitious root. It can also grow from stem area. Now, from above the ground, from the shoot system, if the roots are growing, then that are also said to be adventitious root. And if they are growing from the leaf areas, then also they are said to be adventitious root. And uh, uh, these are basically not the normal ones, as they are not growing from the radical. In case of monocotyledons, in monocots, the roots are growing in the form of fibrous root hairs. You know, fiber-like root hairs are developing, and uh, from the monocots like maize and all, and usually they are developing from hypocotyle and stem axis. This type of plants, in which the root hairs are developing in the form of fibers from the hypocotyle or from the stem axis, are said to be fibrous roots. And usually, it is seen in the monocot plant, and that system of the root will be said to be fibrous root system. So this is all about the roots and the types of roots. Now, next is regions of the root. Usually, the roots are covered. Uh, the main region of the root is the meristematic region, which is covered on the lower side with the help of a protective root cap, and on the upper side they are covered by the region of elongation as well as region of maturation. Let us see all these three regions in detail. The first is. Root cap. Now, the region below meristematic region, or I can say the region which is covering the meristematic one, that is said to be root cap. It is usually found in the plant called pandanus. 
in in certain aquatic plant like pistia pistia the type of aquatic plant in that case this type of covering on the meristematic region is very loose covering and because of that that loose covering is called as root pocket in that case it won't be said to be root cap in that case it is said to be root pocket so that is the first region of the root now the second region of the root is meristematic region now meristematic region is basically uh, as we know it is covered by the root cap in meristematic region there will be continuous cell division continuously the cells are dividing into uh, you know uh, like by the mitotic reaction that one will divide into 2 2 2 to 4 4 2 8 8 to 16 and that will gradually multiply in the number because of that new cells will be added in this region those cells are small thin walled and filled with protoplasm so that's meristematic region the main thing will be it has it has to continuously divide and add new cells into the region the third region is region of elongation third region is region of elongation now in this region as we know that in the meristematic region new cells has been added to that region that newly added cell as well as the components of the cell they will start elongating this newly added cell will continuously you know uh, increase in the wall i mean they are increasing in volume as well as in size and by that the area of that particular the, re the region where new cells were added that region will simply elongate so that's the region of elongation fourth region is and the last one that is region of el uh, maturation now in this region now we have covered the meristematic region meristematic region has added new cells region of elongation has elongated it now the last thing what is left is maturation those elongated cells will undergo differentiation and thereby it will be converted into various tissues and that tissues will be performing their respective functions in this area from this area basically root hairs are also developing the laterally root hairs are developing and that's the reason this area is also said to be root hair region and even the lateral branches are also coming out of this region then from the region of maturation because they are undergoing the process of differentiation so this is all about regions of root now next stage now we are basically uh, starting with the storage of the food now we are uh, we have completed the regions of the root now we are going to start with the functions uh, now in case of roots the normal function of the root is for two thing first is that they have to undergo fixation which means that they have to uh, fix the plant properly into the soil they should have a proper hole in the soil in which the developing plant can have a fixed uh, position inside the ground and second is absorption they are supposed to absorb water and the minerals from the roots and they are supposed to transfer it to the plant so that they can get the nutrients so these are the two normal functions but it is not just it roots are also performing the roots are mainly made for this two function but apart from this roots are also performing various other functions and those functions are said to be the modified functions of the root right so we will now be seeing the different modified functions of the root uh, for what they have uh, along with their normal function which is fixation and absorption they are also performing in certain plant some other functions which are said to be special or modified functions so we are starting with the first function then and that function is storage of food now usually as we know food is prepared by the leaves it is also stored by the leaves but in certain condition the extra amount of the food prepared by the leaves will be stored in the roots and in that case roots will be underground they will become fleshy and they'll get some particular shape and depending on that shape we are usually naming the roots and this type of stored food in the roots will help the plant in tidying over the dormancy which means that whenever they are in the inactive period that stored food will help them to be alive so that's for the storage of food in that first we are going to see the modification of the tap root you must be remembering tap root is the one in which primary root is developing from the radical portion okay so first we are starting with the modifications of root now in modification of root three types of roots are there depending on the shape of the root 
The first is conical taproot. The example of the conical taproot, as you can see, is carrot. In case of carrot, food is stored in root and that becomes conical in shape. That's the reason it is called as conical taproot. Second is fusiform. The example of that is radish. In this case, the food is uh, stored in the root too. As a result, it becomes fusiform in shape. Fusiform is that they are thicker in the beginning and then they will be tapering downwards, which is they will they'll be becoming thinner downwards. That's fusiform, which the radish has. And so it's called as fusiform taproot. And the third is uh, beet, which is having napiform taproot. Now, in case of beet, the extra amount of root is stored in the tip of the root. As a result, root will be turning into a hair-like structure. And as that is, you can see in the diagram, that is, the, these are the uh, hair-like structures which are developing in the beet. And that is why they are said to be napiform taproot. So, that are the modifications of taproot. Next is modifications of adventitious fibrous root. Now, when the fibrous roots stores food and becomes fleshy, when they store food and become fleshy, they are said to be tuberous roots. When they store food and becomes fleshy, they are said to be tuberous root. Tuberous root are usually of two types. The first is simple tuberous root and the example for that is sweet potato. Now sweet potato is usually a creeper. Creeper means the one which is running parallel to the ground. And in that case, as you can see, this, as you can, this is one root. Right? This is another root. This is third, fourth and fifth. Likewise. So basically, in case of sweet potatoes, the tuberous roots are in the isolated forms. They are not present in the form of clusters at a time. They are one at a time present parallel on the ground. So when the tuberous roots are in this form, in the isolated forms, storing food and getting fleshy, then they are said to be simple tuberous root, which is in case of sweet potato. The other type is fasciculated roots, as you can see in case of dahlia. Apart from that, it is also seen in case of asparagus. So in asparagus and dahlia, fasciculated tuberous root is there in which, as you can see, all the roots are there in clusters. All the adventitious roots are in clusters. They have stored food and they have got, got fleshy. Because of that, they are said to be fasciculated tuberous root. So that's the storage of food in case of adventitious fibrous root. Now the next function, the next modified function of the root is mechanical support. This is for the adventitious root. Uh, in mechanical support, two types of supports are required. First is stilt roots. Now stilt roots is usually seen in maize and pandanus. Now in this case, what what happens is that in maize and pandanus, the roots are growing from the node of the stem nearer to the ground. That is, the, the uh, nodes which are there on the stem, which are very nearer to the ground, from that part, the, ad the adventitious roots are growing. These roots will be coming obliquely downwards. They will be growing obliquely downwards into the soil and thereby they will have a proper hold in the soil. As you can see, this one. These are the stilt roots which are developing from the nodes of the stem. They will be growing downwards and they will get, get into the soil and then they develop a proper hold in the soil. Same for the pandanus. This type of extra uh, roots, they already have their underground roots. This is something above the ground, right? So they already have the normal ones. And the need of this extra and additional support of the root is because the normal root of the plants are superficial. That is, they are not able to give that proper support to the plant like maize and pandanus as they should give. So they might fall uh, fall off. And so in that case, this type of stilt roots are required which can hold them properly into the soil. So that's the type of stilt roots. Second is prop roots. Now, in this case, the example is that of a banyan tree. Uh, in case of prop roots, the underground root system is extremely strong and heavy. 
yet they require additional root why because you must be knowing you all all of you must have seen the banyan tree you must be knowing that the individual branches of the banyan tree gradually they becomes very heavy because of that this heavy branches may snap this heavy branches they may snap under their own weight and that's the reason they require an additional support individual branches require an additional support so in this case what they do is that the roots are growing from the branches of the tree from the branches of the banyan tree they will be growing obliquely downwards into the soil and they are always in clusters so once they get into the soil after some time they will turn like the pillars as you can see over here this is a type of root but they have turned so dark they have turned so heavy that they are looking like a pillar but actually they are the cluster of roots so in this way additional support will be given to the banyan tree and so this type of roots are said to be prop roots next type of function uh, modified function is climbing now that is also for the adventitious root now climbing is usually uh seen in the plant like pothos now pothos are the type of twiners the or, or climbers you can say that means they do not ha i mean they have a very weak uh, stem system they cannot stand erect on their own so in that case they require something some type of host to which uh, they could twine around or to which they can climb on and thereby they can get the support uh, the example is that of the pothos root in case of pothos uh, branched or unbranched roots are growing from nodes or internodes of the stem and they will be twining around the support and thereby they can climb as this are undergoing climbing they are said to be climbing roots or they are also said to be clinging roots right and as we know there uh, there there has to be some point of attachment to the host in that case this type of roots will be secreting some specific type of sticky material which will help them to stick to the support and there how they can climb on the host plant so that's all about climbing now next modified function is photosynthesis now we all know that the function of photosynthesis is that of leaves not of roots but in certain plants plants the amount of leaf is very much less or they do not have leaf for example desert plants they do not have leaves then what will they do to prepare food so in that case some other part of the plant except leaf has to modify itself for photosynthesis so let us see that now this is uh, the plant of tenospora now in case of tenospora it's also a twiner that is it requires some type of support to climb on the roots are developing from the nodes of the stem and this type of roots are green thin and adventitious and this uh, roots will be having chlorophyll in them they will prepare the food by photosynthesis and that is why they are said to be root photosynthetic roots or they are also said to be assimilatory roots so this is all about photosynthetic roots now the next function is breathing now breathing is basically uh, seen in mangroves now what exactly are the mangroves let me show it to you okay now mangroves as you can see in the diagram see the first first and this the second diagram in first and the second diagram the exact uh, diagram of the mangroves is given now mangroves are basically those type of trees or plants which are growing in the saline water logged area of creeks soil of creeks that is the one uh, which has very semi solid area you know the one where the amount of moisture content is more in that case the plants which are growing they are said to be the mangroves uh, in case of mangroves the roots they have underground root system in them but from underground root system from the underground root system some superficial uh, some roots are basically growing above the ground from that part only some roots will be growing above the ground from that part that is from the underground part basically this type of roots are positively phototropic 
that is they are in the direction of the light and they are negatively hydrotropic that is they are in the direction opposite to that of water that is above the ground so they are positively phototropic but negatively hydrotropic right and this type of roots are basically uh, you know uh, they are very thin they are usually brown in color they do not have chlorophyll in them and most important they have large amount of lenticels in them and this lenticels are responsible for absorbing they are mainly responsible for absorbing moisture or i can say oxygen from the atmosphere and they give it to the uh, plants which are usually there in the underground mangroves areas so this type of uh, plants are said to be the this type of roots are said to be the breathing roots and particularly they are also said to be pneumatophores as i can show you the diagram can you see this third and the fourth diagram the diagram is that of the pneumatophore so in this way they will be growing out from the ground and they will be absorbing oxygen from the atmosphere and will be providing it to the plant so they are the breathing roots now next modification is absorption of moisture now usually there are certain types of epiphytic plant this type of thing is usually seen in the uh, epiphytic plants epiphytic plant one of the example is that of the orchid in case of orchid they are usually growing on the plants on the forest they are acting as an epiphyte now epiphyte usually mean the one which only depend on the host for habitat they do not take water or minerals or any type of nutrient from the host they just and just take the habitat from the host they have no contact with the soil so basically what will happen is that this roots are basically growing obliquely into the air they are they are simply going vertically into the air in the air this roots are basically made up of valiment tissue as you can see in the diagram this is the type of valiment tissue which is present in each and every epiphytic root this valiment tissue is basically uh, thick walled and multi layered it is usually uh, thick walled and multi multi layered uh, present on the roots and this type of uh, uh, tissue is basically responsible for absorbing moisture from the atmosphere and they will provide it uh, to the uh, orchid plant that is a type of epiphytic plant so this type of roots are said to be the epiphytic roots because they are acting as an epiphyte on some of the other plants so that is absorption of moisture next is parasitism you must be knowing the, the type of parasite well, the definition of parasitic that is the one which depend on the host for everything that said to be parasite now usually two types of parasites are there uh, uh, total parasite as well as partial parasite cascuta is a type of total parasite in which the plant totally depends on host for everything they 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 take water they take minerals as well as they take prepared food from the host and uh, for themselves so they are said to be total parasite and this they take by developing suckers or hostoria they are the point of attachment between the conducting tissue of the host and the conducting tissue of the plant and from this they'll be taking all the things from the host so they are said to be total parasite other is partial parasite other is partial parasite which is lorenthus lorenthus is usually uh, there on the mango trees and uh, they take only minerals and water from the host again that will be through suckers or hostoria this particular plant they possess chlorophyll of their own and because of that they can prepare their own food by using the materials what they have got from the host and so because of that they are said to be partial parasite and this type of roots are said to be parasitic roots so that's all about parasitism next is symbiosis now uh there are certain uh, plants like bean groundnut etc in this case they are having special type of roots in them which are called as root nodules in this root nodules a special type of bacterias are inhabiting which are called as rhizobium bacteria 
Now this rhizobium bacteria is having symbiotic relationship with the root nodules of this plant. How symbiosis? Symbiosis means both the things that is root as well as the plant will be helping each other in some ways. What happen is that rhizobium will be fixing nitrogen that is it will be fixing nit atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogen salts and they will give it to the root nodules of the plants. So they are helping root nodules in converting the atmospheric nitrogen to nitrogen soils. In return, root nodules will provide uh, habitat as well as nutrition to the rhizobium. So in this way, both are giving something to each other, both are taking something from each other. So they are called as symbiosis and this type of roots are said to be symbiotic roots. And the last function is that of vegetative propagation. Now, usually, as you can see, uh, now, usually vegetative propagation takes place in sweet potato. In case of sweet potato, the roots are usually, uh, can you see this type of birds present on them? These are said to be the vegetative birds and they will be used for reproduction. So from uh, this part, the new plant will be developing of the sweet potato. So this type of roots are said to be vegetative pro propagating roots basically or reproducing roots. So these are nine different modified functions of the root. And with that, we, add, we end with the morphology of the root.